Hello everyone and welcome! If you are in the 3D printing hobby, you are most probably familiar with Printables, Thingiverse, Maker World, Thanks and other model repositories. And these are great places to start printing models for your needs or just some nice looking sculptures, like this gargoyle for example. But sometimes you may find yourself in a situation where your printed files don't fit or you want to make a slight change to suit you better. So in these cases, you would probably want to edit it a bit. But how do you do that? So let's find out. So if we go to the files menu, we will see that there are STL files and there is a 3MF extensions for files. And if you search a bit more, you will sometimes find step files, STP or step extension files. So let's discuss what's the difference and how to modify them in FreeCAD. So here I have conveniently placed three models that I have modeled personally, and we will start with the STL file. So let's select our STL project, go to File, Import, and select the STL file. Click Open. What you will notice is that those edges are not highlighted as we typically are used to, and it has a green icon denoting that it's a mesh. So what's a mesh? Mesh is a 3D file that is comprised of facets and versities. Fun fact is that STL stands for stereolithography, which we now know as 3D printing, and was created in late 1980s, specifically for 3D printing and additive manufacturing. So it's a quite old format, but it's very light and it gets the job done. Now to the modification. As you notice, we can only select the full model because it's a mesh. We need it to, to convert to the solid so we can modify it in FreeCAD. To do that, we will need to go to the part workbench, select our body, part, and create shape from mesh. Select seal shape, and the tolerance is how detailed should the model be. The lower the number, the more precise the model will be. The higher the number, the less faces it will have. We'll leave it at default and click OK. And immediately you will notice that all our edges now are visible. Let's hide our initial body and we can even select each face individually. However, it's not very useful to have the model like that. So we need to refine it a bit. There's a useful command for that. We will select our body, part, create copy and refine shape and immediately you will notice the difference. So it did rather good job with planar faces, however, circles, arcs, fillets will still have those facets. And we will need to be dealing with that in the next step. But before that, we need to follow one more step, and it's to part, convert to solid. Now, it's a shape that FreeCAD understands, and we can go to the part design, create new body, as this part was already selected, it automatically became the part and the base feature for our new body. You will notice that there is no history, we will start with this feature. And what we want to do is to make the central hole smaller. We can select our top face, create new sketch. You will see that when I designed this model, I placed the origin in the middle of the hole. So it's quite useful and we don't need to make any changes here. So we can use the circle tool in our sketch toolbar and just create one circle that is bigger and one circle that is smaller. And I would like to dimension it to be exactly 50 millimeters. I will close it, select the pad tool, select up to face and select the bottom face of my model. And just like that, we have created the hole with necessary dimensions that is smooth. Now we can select our edges, select fillet, one millimeter is fine, click OK, and we have successfully modified our STL file. So my approach with STL files would be to modify just the parts that you want and leave the faceted parts that you don't need modified as they are. At this point, you might be wondering, what is this part? So this is a filter holder for Ilford multigrade filters for darkroom enlarger. And it was one of the first parts that I have modeled and 3D printed. It still works as intended. However, you will notice 
that it's not very 3D printing friendly. Leave me a comment if you would like to see me redesign this part to be friendly for 3D printing. Now let's hide it for a bit and let's go to the 3MF file. The first thing that you'll notice is that there is a thumbnail for this file. Let's open it with the 7-zip and there's a folder called metadata and there's a thumbnail inside it. And if we will open it, we will see it. It's an archive type format. It can contain two types of models. The first one would be called dot model. And if we open it with notepad, it will be the XML file with the list of vertices and their coordinates. The other type of 3MF model file is just the STL file that is encapsulated in this archive. So 3MF file is quite new on the block. It was officially released only in 2015. And it's supported by most CAD systems, FreeCAD including, and most 3D printing slicers as well, like Orca slicers, Prusa slicers, etc, etc, etc. If we load it in, you will see that it's exactly the same as STL. We have the mesh file. We can select only the whole model, not the faces. So what are the differences? So 3MF file, which stands for 3D manufacturing format, includes such additional parameters like multi-material, multi-color information, improves interoperability between CAD and slicing programs, and supports, for example, multiple build plates, like in Orca Slicer. But it's still a mesh format. So to start editing it, we will still go to the part, select part, create shape from mesh, sous shape, OK, hide, select, part, create copy, refine shape, select part, part, convert to solid. And then we will do the same as for STL, because again, it's a mesh file. So for example, I want to delete one of the holes. I'll go back to the part design workbench. I will create new body. This time it was not selected. So I will drag it inside the body and it will become a base feature. Now I can select the top face create new sketch on it, select circle tool, and the precision is not required here, just close it off, close, pad, up to face, and the back face. Click OK, and our hole is gone. So the approach would be as exactly as the STL file. Now let's go to the step file. File, import, and let's select the step file. We will be presented with a different dialog. We'll leave it at default right now and click OK. And now you will notice that we have the same model as we had in 3MF file, only it's not faceted. The faces are smooth and continuous. It is because the step file, unlike the STL and 3MF, is a parametric CAD file and it stands for standard for exchange of product. It was designed for interoperability between CAD softwares and other manufacturing softwares. Interestingly enough, the file format is quite old. It was released in 1994. However, modern 3D slicers started to support it only in 2022, just two years ago as of the recording of this video. And thanks to the Prusa slicer, we can now exchange these files in the parametric way, just like we designed them. What that enables us is that we can edit these files much simpler. We can skip all the conversion steps. My approach to editing step files is that first I decide what I want to edit and prepare the model for this edit. For example, let's say I want to extend this part. To do that, I would need to modify this shape. But it has fillets, it has chamfers. So how would I approach modeling it? So first I would go to the part workbench and I will select all the faces of the chamfer. And in the corner you will see a tool called the featuring. Let's click it. And the chamfer is gone. So now I want to remove the chamfer from the bottom. So I will select all the chamfer faces and click the, the feature tool. But unfortunately, it removes more than I want and repairs the model in the way that I don't want it to be. So let's undo that. In these cases, let's start the featuring one face at a time. Let's start with this 
non-planar phase and try to defeature it. And it works. Let's do the same with the second arc. Then we will remove the front chamfer. And let's remove the side ones as well. So this cleaned up it real nice. And this as well. The only features that are left are these fillets. And let's remove them as well. Now we have planar faces and we can proceed with modifications. Let's focus on our feature tree and we see that it created a new solid for each defeaturing step. We don't need all of those steps and solids, so we can just delete them and we're left with the one repaired solid that we want to edit. We can continue editing it in the part workbench, however I prefer the part design workbench. So I will go there, create new body, drag the defeatured solid inside the body and it becomes the base feature. Now we can select the side face, create new sketch, create external geometry, let's select this edge and this edge. Now we will select the line tool, so let's create the outline of our shape. We will have one horizontal line, one vertical line and one line at an angle. So then I will make this edge and this point coincident. Then I will make this edge and this edge parallel and this line and this point coincident. Now I can freely drag it. I will make this point and this point vertical. Then I will dimension the extension for 4 millimeters and the extension on the other side for 1 millimeter. Now why did I do that? I did that to avoid the zero thickness problem and it's not specific to FreeCAD. Every other CAD has the same problem when mathematically these faces should touch and everything should be fine. However, they don't and it's called the zero thickness problem. So the last thing is to just connect these two points to make our sketch fully defined and closed. We have a redundant constraint. Let's click it and click delete key and we're done with the sketch. Click close. Now we can select our sketch and pad it up to face and let's select the opposite face. And now we have extended it. Click OK. Then let's recreate all the features that we have deleted. So let's select these two edges and fillet them for let's say three millimeters. Click OK. Select the top edge, click chamfer, let's say 0 0.5 millimeters. Click OK and select this edge, click chamfer. 0.5 millimeters and maybe it's one millimeter. Yeah, it looks like one millimeter and click OK. And that's it. We have successfully modified our part and it was much easier and smoother than with the STL or 3MF files. So when I started modeling parts in CAD software, I exported them as STL files and now I only export them as step files because if I need them to be modified or if I publish them, then community users could modify them easier. So I hope you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one.